closer to 2023, it is snowing market opportunities for Uganda, the pearl of Africa. Do you believe America has a number of opportunities for Uganda's private sector? They are available for you to tap into. In this edition of Business Perspective, I tell you how to break into the US market and what are some of the aspects you have to fix to break even in this market. Welcome to Business Perspective. I am Isabella Tsukume here in Chicago, Illinois, the United States of America. Accessibility for foreigners to invest in Africa this year is for Uganda. Probably after the elections in Nigeria, we will bring the Nigerians. Then we go down to Togo, Rwanda, and so on and so forth. And this is what we are trying to do at this place to make sure that people understand the significance of investing in Africa and developing some relationships. That's what we are doing. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Dr. Ewa Ewa, one of the founders of this organization, which will be a It has been in existence for many, many years. This event is the first one we are going to be undertaking after the COVID. I am very pleased to welcome all of you to let you understand that when we extend our investment opportunities to Africa and the world as a whole, things become very, very exciting. Yes. We have been doing this for the past 34 years. Wow. We started with the Continental Africa Chamber of Commerce, and today is the African Global Chamber of Commerce. You are very welcome. I hope that the weather is not going to prevent the Prime Minister from
from coming down because as we all know, Chicago, the, the president, sorry, the president of Uganda. Fortunately, I was on a video conference two months ago when they had a similar thing in Los Angeles. I was very, very happy. Today is Chicago. Tomorrow in Washington. I want you to leave this place with an objective fulfilled. Because the more you invest in Africa, in Uganda, with all the things that you've seen out there, please, we need your support, we need your assistance, and we need everything that you can contribute for the development of Uganda. Tomorrow it may be Nigeria, Ghana, and so on and so forth. So, on behalf of the African continent, the African Global Chamber of Commerce, please welcome. And I believe this, we will talk more about what we have to do. Please listen and I'll give, give it up to the chairman. Thank you very much. Welcome. But I wear so many different hats when it comes to um, serving my community. Um, I work very, very closely with um, Mr. Olivier Kamanzi, and I am the Senior Advisor for Africa Global Chamber of Commerce. And it's such a, a privilege and a delight uh, that he trusted me to deliver his speech. So I'm going to uh, read his speech on his behalf. Uh, His Excellency Yuri Museveni, the President of the Republic of Uganda, Mr. Odrik Rabobo, Chairman of the Presidential Advisory Committee on Export and Industrial Development, Republic of Uganda, Senator Dick Durbin, U.S. Congress, United States, Honorary Emmanuel Priestwell, Speaker of the Illinois uh, House of Representatives. His Excellency J.B. Pritzker, Governor of Illinois, um, Illinois State, United States. Honorary Kwame Raoul, Attorney General of Illinois State. Honorary Lori Lightfoot, Mayor of Chicago. Honorable members of the diplomatic community. Honorary David Lee Anderson, Jr., Honor, Honorary um, Council of Uganda and Chicago, Honorable Commissioner Donna Miller, Mr. John Washington Rogers, Jr., Founder and CEO of Aerial Capital Management, United States, Mr. Robert Steiner, Distinct Director U.S. Small Business Administration in the U.S. Ms. Anarita Wamala, President of the Ugandan National American Association. Ms. Amber Johnson, Vice Chairman of African Global Chamber of Commerce. Distinguished guests, investors, entrepreneurs, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for your presence at this monumental and groundbreaking event, the first annual Uganda-US International Trade Summit, an exhibition, of organi exhibition organized by the African Global Chamber of Commerce in conjunction with Republic of Uganda's Presidential Advisory Committee on Exports and Industrial Development. So the purpose of the summit is to boost trade between the US and Republic of Uganda. It is our fundamental belief that this can best be accomplished by establishing strong relationships between U.S. companies and Ugandan exporters. Through the creation of networks and the introduction of various Ugandan goods and services, including coffee, of course, dairy products, oil seeds, cocoa, chocolate, dried fruits, fish, such as Nile's perch, dry solid beef, tourism and more to U.S. retail outlets, distributors, investors, and ultimately consumers. To achieve our aim, the summit will involve discussing discussions regarding Uganda and U.S. trade policies, 
strategies for boosting trade between Uganda and U.S. markets, removing bottlenecks to trade, exporting financing and grantees, product safety and standards, preparation for Ugandan firms to export to U.S. markets, as well as business-to-business -business stations. Planning the summit involved a lot of tools, deliberation, and dedication from key stakeholders, including the Republic of Uganda's Presidential Advisory Committee on Exports and Industrial Development, the African Global Chamber of Commerce, and His Excellency President Yori Museveni, the President of the Republic of Uganda himself, who carried the, tro the torch of his African forefathers forward. His graceful presence today in officiating the launching of this summit only furthers his commitment to success of this important partnership between Uganda and the U.S. I would also like to state that organizing this outstanding summit is a great honor and a privilege for the African Global Chamber of Commerce, the AGGC. No, AGCC. AGCC is a 501c6 tax exempt non profit trade association incorporated in the state of Illinois. It was established to promote trade, commerce, economic development, and a cultural exchange globally for Africa's socioeconomic and political interests, as well as those of its partners, including the US. We accomplished these aims through working collaboratively with government and private sectors through organizing seminars and consultation, also providing technical assistance, assistance, international import export facilitations, business consulting services, and more. As we join to enhance export from Uganda to the US and strengthen investment in Uganda, I am reminded that much like the planning of the Senate, working together is ultimately the key success as we move forward our ambitious goal. As Desmond Tutu stated in his explanation of Ubuntu, we are all made for complementarity. We are created for a deliberate network of relationships, of interdependence with fellow human beings, with the race of the creation. So let us use the summit to plant the seeds of collaboration and show our commitment to nurture those seeds to fruition until we meet and surpass Uganda's export target of 6.6 .6 billion by 2027. I also reminded, I'm also reminded that our commitment to and sense of togetherness makes us more resilient as many African countries, including Uganda, recover economically from colonialism, COVID-19, and other 21st century calamities, and that togetherness begins at entrepreneurial level. Cultivating relationships with each other and exchanging ideas and experiences to overcome hurdles. As His Excellency Ramaphasa the President of South Africa reminds us no action is too small when it comes to changing the world. And I quote, I am inspired every time I meet an entrepreneur who is succeeding against all odds. End of quote. With this in mind, I say to entrepreneurs out there that, are the, that you are the big rock of our economic development. And with events like this, we will succeed together. We believe that our vision and your vision will make, will take us to places we never imagined possible. And your disciplined action will show us the possibilities. The greater heights we, we can all reach individually, as a community, as a continent, and a society as a whole through collaboration. I hope you will take advantage of every opportunity the summit has to offer as I believe it will provide all of us with the basic tools to launch a successful trade partnership 
between Uganda and the U.S. market. Let's make the best out of this two days. Mr. Olivier Kamanzi, Chairman of the African Global Chamber. Uh, I said to Barry Ibrahima, um, Senior Advisor for African Global Chamber of Commerce. Good job, good job. Thank you. We're going to continue our program in just a few minutes, but I want to bring up a young man who knows a lot about trade outside the border. His name is Moses K. Sabini. He's coming this way now. Come on out. Welcome him with some warm applause. Warm applause. He is the Vice Chairman of the Presidential Advisory Committee. Norman. Thank you. I, I, I follow you. You are a great inspiration, especially on making change. Good deal. And we are here to do that. Yes. Um, in this audience tonight, uh, we are privileged to have um, the Minister of Trade, Industry, and Cooperative, uh, Honorable uh, Francis Mwebesa. Kindly welcome him. That's, that's my boss. Uh, we have the senior presidential advisor on Agoa, uh, whose armpit we are trading, um, Mrs. Susan Mwezi, kindly welcome her. Um, I don't know, the permanent secretary, minister of trade, if she made it here, I knew she was on her way. Senior government officials, uh, senior uh, embassy uh, of Uganda, all of our USA officials. Um, US um, colleagues and our hosts uh, tonight, um, I'm privileged to be um, in this room where uh, we shall have, already we have uh, Senator Dick Daban, the Mayor uh, Richard Arvin, Mayor Rory, um, the Attorney General, Honorable Kwame, uh, Raul, and um, yeah, Honorable Chris Welsh um, uh, tonight. Um, all protocols up. I, I, I don't know who is in the room, uh, excuse me, particularly the colleagues uh, from, um, uh, from Chicago. Um, my name, as um, the MC said, I'm Moses Sabiti. I'm a trade specialist working with the Presidential Advisory Committee on Exports and Industrial Movement. I deputize uh, my chairman, who is not yet here because of, of, of light issues. Um, and my role is actually to welcome you. Uh, the Presidential Advisory Committee brings together the private sector and public sector uh, to boost trade between Uganda and different countries. We have an ambitious target of six billion in the next five years, and it is a concerted effort uh, for all of us. And that's why we are here, as the theme goes, uh, increasing exports to the U.S., raising investments. And the sub-theme, to me, is very important, especially on sustainability of trade. We expect, out of this engagement, three main outcomes, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, to speak to our American colleagues, we brought over 20 uh, Uganda companies that have products to demonstrate that actually in Uganda, unlike other countries, you have what to export. You have seen coffee, gluten free, uh, banana flour, um, a lot of stuff, beef that is pasture fed. We didn't carry it, but we have the product. So we would expect. Uh, that after this engagement and the rest to follow, we get uh, investments in agriculture, in mining, in tourism. Um, and there are opportunities for value addition. Um, we have some mangoes from one of our industrial parks. These are mangoes that grow under sunshine. 100% under the aquarium, they develop sugar, the best, and they are here. And it is to demonstrate that actually when you invest in Africa, you are able to ship uh, already manufactured goods uh, to the Americas and the rest of the world. Um, 
We are also looking for an opportunity uh, to have American of takers to lift Ugandan companies and uh, match make them with, Amer uh, with, with, with American companies to be in these big stores, um, coffee um, and other products. It is only through trade, ladies and gentlemen, that America can contribute towards Uganda's poverty reduction. And instead of asking for aid, we are asking that let us trade together as a win-win. So uh, that's why I'm here. Then finally, uh, as the outcome, um, export finance in Uganda is extremely expensive. To underwrite an invoice, for example, you need to pay uh, interest of over 18 and uh, to borrow on an open market, you borrow um, at times towards 29% uh, interest rate. Therefore, there is an opportunity uh, where His Excellency the President has cleared uh, uh, the private sector to create a fund which is called an export credit fund. And the private sector will put in money, um, government will put in money, but most importantly, the venture capital funds of the United States have an opportunity now to put in money and they will be earning on the investment, they will be earning on the interest earn. Um, we have exhibitors out there and we've created a catalog, a catalog of 13 sectors with uh, a combined uh, value of 3.4 trillion US dollars. And these are areas that we share and, and we be able to actually uh, invest. So these people out here have asked me uh, to request for three things. One, they need partnerships with American companies. Partnerships, come and invest. Uganda is the most um, liberal economy where you can repatriate 100% of the money you make. And the, the product is there. They want technology, they want know-how. Um, they want skills development um, where you are uh, today. And the people from tourism, they said, look, Americans are big spenders. They want luxury hotels. And one of the big investors said, look, you have beautiful national parks. So, let us be, get people to come and invest in this. We, we, we do host the biggest population of mountain gorillas wow. in Uganda. We have fauna and flora, the biggest you can ever have in terms of biodiversity. Wow. Temperature 36 degrees, you don't need a blanket to sleep. <laughs> so, tourism is a big thing. Government, the minister is there. The advisor is there, you have the best incentive regime, one, on a very bit of land, for free, on tax holidays, and you take your money when you make it out. So that's why I'm here before you. I'd like to thank, um, from the deep bottom of my heart, uh, the African Global Chamber of Commerce, Mr. Oliver Kamanzi, who is managing protocol issues. Outside, please tell him, I will thank him every day I meet him, assisted by Henrita Wamara and the team of volunteers, the army of volunteers who are making this happen. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for listening to me for now. Thank you. Hello, welcome. Uh, Mary Lifeo sends her regrets. Uh, she is uh, an engagement, uh, so I'm the second best thing, um, and I want to give a warm welcome to you all. I am Jesus El Toro, I'm with the uh, Mayor's Office, Office of New Americans, and we have an engagement council, eight to be exact, and Dr. Ewa Ewa, Olivier are some of our most uh, active members, and within that engagement council, uh, we have uh, a number of representatives across the African diaspora, given the mayor insight as to the challenges and needs of the African community in Chicago. So I'm happy to uh, be here today. It's an honor uh, to uh, celebrate today's 
uh, meeting and uh, convention. I will uh, be uh, honored to read a, some words from the mayor. I am uh, really honored to be here and be able to celebrate with you all. So dear friends, on behalf of the city of Chicago, I am honored to welcome all of those gathered for the U.S.-Uganda International Trade Summit and Exhibition, hosted by the African Global Chamber of Commerce and the Presidential Advisory Committee on Exports and Industrial Development. The Africa Global Chamber of Commerce was founded with the goal of promoting trade, economic development, cultural exchange, and education in Africa and with other countries. The U.S.-Uganda International Trade Summit and Exhibition will bring together industry leaders to network, learn, and inspire with a full schedule of keynote speakers, workshops, and breakout sessions. Attendees will gain the tools and resources needed to boost trade between Uganda and U.S. markets, improve business relations, and reduce the trade bottleneck. I am proud to welcome His Excellency President Doweri Museveni of the Republic of Uganda, and I recommend all those involved for their efforts to drive the economy forward. I hope your event is memorable and enjoyable. Best wishes for continued success. Sincerely, Lori E. Lightfoot, Mayor. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. I, I think this might be our first winter of the year. Uh, so the snow is coming down, so perhaps not the warmest day, but I really hope that today is an opportunity for you all to connect with each other, talk about the future, and understand that Chicago is here to support. And again, thank you for all the organizers, Dr. Ewa Ewa, Olivier, for their involvement with the mayor's office, and I uh, wish you all a fruitful uh, summit. Thank you so much. Thank you. Good job. Good job. Your life has got some young people working for it. We all let, let you know that the, uh, the president is in the building. He's about to come in, and we are going to sit back, relax. He'll be walking in and taking a seat up front, and he'll be talking. We got wireless microphones for him.
Um, Mr. President, welcome to Chicago this uh, cold afternoon. Uh, my role is to introduce the program in the coming uh, two hours. Mr. President, we, there will be a two-day uh, international trade summit and exhibition organized by Africa Global Chamber of Commerce and Presidential Advisory Committee on Exports and Industrial Development. Uh, today, our host, Mr. Olivier Kamanzi, uh, from the uh, Africa Global Chamber of Commerce, will give remarks, and he will be followed by the representative of Passaic, uh, who will be followed by the Uganda North American Association President, Arianeta Omara, who will uh, introduce the Honorable Minister of Trade, uh, Honorable Mavesa, and then who will welcome you uh, to give remarks, Mr. President. Uh, thank you, Mr. Kamanzi, please. Thank you, Ambassador Donia. Hey, everybody, for this wonderful uh, uh, research and then uh, introducing the program. So, Your Excellency, Yoweri Museveni, President for the Republic of Uganda, Mr. Audrey Wagogo, Chairman of our Presidential Advisory Committee on Exports and the Digital Development of the Republic of Uganda, Ambassador Ad uh, Adonia Ayibare, the permanent representative of uh, at, uh, United Nations, uh, representative of Senator Dick Durbin, U.S. Congress of uh, the United States, the representative of Honorable Emmanuel Chris Walsh, Speaker of the Illinois, of the House of Representatives, representative of the GB, Prisca, Governor for the State of Illinois, uh, Honorable Kamera Wool, Attorney General of Illinois, representative of uh, Honorable Lori Rightful, Mayor for Chicago, Honorable Members of Diplomatic Court, Member of the business representatives, all exhibitors coming all the way from Uganda, the board member of Africa Global Chamber of Commerce, ladies and gentlemen, all protocol observers. Thank you, Your Excellency, President Yoweri Kabuta Museveni, for being with us today to witness this momentum, momentum, the groundbreaking event for the opening of the first annual U.S.-Uganda International Trade Summit and Exhibition organized by the Africa Global Chamber of Commerce in conjunction with the Republic of Uganda Presidential Advisory Committee on Export and Judicial Development. The purpose of this summit is to boost trade between the U.S. and the Republic of Uganda. It's our fundamental belief that this can be the best uh, can be best accomplished by establishing strong relationships between the U.S. companies with Ugandan exporters who are here today. Over 25 exporters of Ugandan products are here. To today to network and connect with you, uh, U.S. companies to introduce 13 products made in Uganda, such as coffee, dairy, oil seed, steel, cocoa, chocolate, dried fruits, fish, dry solid beef, banana flour, tourists, and many more products. We also want to recognize in the room, the U.S. companies who are here to connect with the Ugandan exporters who are bringing this product to introduce for first time Ugandan product in the U.S. market. 
To achieve this, three things must happen. Number one, we are going to encourage investments in agriculture, in minerals, and tourism. What really the Pacific or Presidential Advisory uh, Committee on Trade and Industrial Development, their goal is to move from where we are today to achieve 6.6 6 billion, 6 .6 billion US dollars for the next five years. We, Chamber, we are committed to work with the government of Uganda to help to achieve that bold goal. Once again, thank you for your presence. And today, Mr. Uh, your Excellency President Museveni, your presence here will demonstrate your commitment to trade and investment to attract US investors to come to Uganda, look in the Ugandan market, and invest in Uganda. Our chamber is committed to work with your government with every business community to mobilize U.S. investors to invest in the Ugandan market. <laughs> Once again, our chamber is a not-profit organization, a trade association, that is here to promote African-made products. Today, we are promoting Uganda-made products. This chamber was established to promote trade, commerce, economic development, education, and the cultural exchange, exchanges globally for African social, economic, and the political interests, as well as those, in, those partners, including the U.S. and the many more partners. Your Excellency, joining together to enhance exports from Uganda to the U.S., and the strength and investment in Uganda, I'm reminded that much like planning of the summit, working together is the ultimate key to the success as we move towards our ambitious goal, which is to succeed moving forward. As Desmond Tutu stated in his explanation for Ubuntu spirit, we are all made for complementarity. We are created for a delicate network of relationships of interdependence with our, or with our fellow human beings with the rest of the creation. So let us, the summit, be a venue to plan, to plant the seeds for further collaboration and show our commitment to nurture, to nurture those seeds to fruit to fruition until we meet again next year as we're planning to have this as an annual event. I am reminded our commitment to continue to work together. Once again, Your Excellency, we believe that your vision will take us to many places where never imagined possible. Your discipline action will show us the possibilities, the greater heights we can all reach individual as a community, as a continent, as a society, as your spirit of Pan-Africanism. We really are grateful for your commitment to see Africa we want, achieving our goals. I hope all of you today, you will take advantage of every opportunity this summit has to offer, as I believe it will provide all of us with the basic tools to launch a successful trade partnership between Uganda and the United States and the, the United States market. Let's best out of these two days take advantage as we start today. Your Excellency, this is the first day we inviting all people are here to visit Uganda made products. Once again, Your Excellency, thank you for coming here in this beautiful city of Chicago, in the state of Illinois. Thank you so much. God, God bless you.
Mr. Moses finds his way to the to a few remarks. Mr. President, allow me to introduce the representative of the state government, uh, Donna Mira, who is seated on the podium. She is the commissioner for Cook County, 6th District. Yeah, we're happy she's here. Thank you. Excellency, uh, the President of the Republic of Uganda, um, uh, Honorable Minister of Trade, Industry and Cooperatives, uh, Senior Presidential Advisor on AGOA, um, Senior Officials um, of the Uganda uh, Diplomatic Corps, um, Senior Leaders of uh, the State, and ladies and gentlemen, um, Your Excellency, I'm supposed to have a presentation, but I run through quickly, and I request that um, uh, my colleagues uh, who work with me uh, come closer, Matthew Bagons and uh, Brenda. Um, Your Excellency, you created the Presidential Advisory Committee on Exports and Industrial Development uh, to deal with bottlenecks that do affect uh, trade, and you gave us an ambitious target uh, to increase um, Uganda's revenue by adding an additional six billion in the next five years. We've embarked on it, and that's why we are here to tell America that actually Uganda is accessible, is not very far. We have an excellent um, environment, 26 degrees all year round. We are not short of products. In some countries, uh, you don't have what to offer. We have organic products, we have good rains, and we have uh, uh, a lot of food. Your Excellency, how do we intend and where do we intend to get this revenue from? From coffee, we project that actually um, the next five years we should be able to earn 1.5 billion uh, US dollars from fruits and vegetables, um, 186 million from dairy, 568 million, from beef, um, 986 million, um, from fish, 356 million, uh, from poultry, 350 million US dollars, grains and pulses, 992 million expected revenue, and uh, sugar, uh, 200 million flowers, about 180 million, of course, tourism, uh, 1 billion. And how do we intend to do this? By dealing with the challenges that do affect Uganda's exports to the rest of the world, uh, i.e. standards. We are happy, Your Excellency, that your government has dealt with production issues, uh, infrastructure, accessibility to all borders, and uh, the cost of power. Therefore, um, the biggest challenge that we have, we had before, was to deal with standards of exports. And we are happy, Your Excellency, that your government listened to the private sector and to all of us, and we have really uh, instructed the government to take uh, care of this. Because we lose, uh, on average, over 100 million US dollars per year because of poor standards. So that is history. And actually reversing that, we should be able to exceed this target. Uh, secondly, um, we are working, and this is where we appeal uh, to American companies to come and invest with us, to improve border infrastructure and other infrastructure for export. There are lots of investment opportunities uh, in the areas of laboratories, in the areas of park houses, in the areas of cold chain storage, where America actually has a lot of experience and advantage. And we have an unconventional way, Your Excellency, of getting these exports. It's, it's a little disruptive, um, it might cause some uneasiness, but we want to be in the market. That's why, Your Excellency, we've lifted uh, so many companies, and they are here, 26 of them, with the product. And working uh, with the Office of Your Excellency, we've managed to have trade representatives appointed. These are 
business people like Mr. Olivier Kamanzi, Mr. Cody, um, Mark Passe, who you could have met in the UK, who know the market and they are able to pull along these Ugandan companies to be uh, of takers. Of course, we are happy that you are dealing with the right team um, uh, to improve the doing business um, climate. The cost of capital excellence is very expensive and uh, we thank you for clearly per se to go ahead and think through the export credit fund. In our, during our stay here, Your Excellency, we shall be interesting um, American companies where uh, they have some equity funds to come and invest with us and have the opportunity uh, to be able to infuse their skills uh, with the rest uh, of Uganda. Our request, as I conclude, Your Excellency, we've been assured that actually we shall get these markets. And we know we are dealing with uh, structural challenges where you are providing excellent leadership, Your Excellency. Um, we request that we revive Uganda's sea routes from Mombasa to America so that um, the off-takers of, of, of this um, state and any other America, uh, including South America, they are able to use affordable transport and also how we wish that we could first track the bilateral air agreement between Uganda and USA and have a designated uh, cargo plane to lift all these beautiful uh, flowers and vegetables uh, to the people of America. From the Americans, again, we call upon you to invest in agriculture, mineral development, uh, tourism, value addition. Um, we are going to work with you to see how you can offtake uh, a lot of products. I, I, I normally, I like coffee, I stray into Starbucks and I'm looking for Ugandan coffee. Ugandan coffee is the most beautiful coffee. We have it out here growing in mountain, uh, mountainous areas, specialist coffee. It loses identity the moment it gets onto the auction. So we want to start slowly and be able to enter these markets so that we get even a premium price uh, for our people back home. We wouldn't be looking for any certain excellence. We want trade, fair trade, and it's a win-win between America and Uganda because we all what it takes, we have what it takes to uh, actually uh, trade. Um, today, Your Excellency, uh, we shall be signing MOUs with trade representatives in this region, Kodi Ndiro Omulangira, who is really Uganda, with Ndiro Coffee, and already he has a plan to get into the Starbucks uh, of this um, market, and Mr. Oliver Kamanzi, uh, the African um, Global Chamber of Commerce, uh, we shall be um, signing MOUs, um, and we are happy, Your Excellency, that you are able to bless this occasion. Finally, I promise that wherever I meet these two people, even the world, I thank them. And I've been doing that on behalf of Uganda. Uh, and I would like to thank them, uh, Your Excellency, before you. Um, um, Mr. Olivier Kamanzi has just given remarks, Your Excellency. Um, he's, he's helping Africa. I go to learn. Uganda, we are coming on late because he helps uh, to partner um, to, to bring B2B between businesses in Africa and America and he has done a lot with a lot of volunteers like we are doing at Percent to make this um, uh, event uh, possible. She is, he is assist, um, assisted by um, Mrs. Henrietta Wamala, the president of Uganda National American Chef as of, um, Association. Uh, please, um, the audience, give them a round. Uh, <laughs> Finally, Your Excellency, I would like to introduce to you a few Ugandans who have, you know, um, volunteered to come and chart the ways, um, like the Vasco da Gama has come to Africa, to come to America and the rest of the world, and look for markets as clear pathways to get Uganda out of poverty. Brenda can rip them up um, as we conclude. Thank you.
Your Excellency, the President of the Republic of Uganda, all protocol observed, I'd like to thank you so much for leading us, the Uganda delegation, to the USA to open markets. And like my colleague has said, I will quickly ask the business people from Uganda. Unfortunately, I won't go through all of you name by name, but I will request that you stand when I, when I mention your sector, then I can quickly um, say the names. Okay, I've been asked by my vice chair to actually say the names, so I'll read them through. I will start with tourism. Tourism, we have two uh, companies that we have, Adventure Consult by Brian Mogume, and uh, we have Let's Go Travel by Joan Cantu. We have um, those in uh, fresh produce, Africa, Kanze Limited, Nagasha Christine um, Singuzi, please stand. We have uh, Robert Mutebe Mirwa, he's in grains. We have uh, Monrovia Migade Coffee. We have uh, Kamira Musa, uh, he's in grains. We also have Mr. Sujal, who is in fish. Rakesh, uh, he's in fish. Uh, we have um, the group of coffee, who are in specialty coffee. Uh, that includes Sylvia, Silva Achibet, please stand. Kenneth Barije, please stand. Nelson Tugume, please stand. Uh, we also have those in uh, banana flour, and this is a very um, important product that we believe the U.S. will take because we know the nutritious value that our bananas come with. Uh, the team from uh, the, uh, the presidential, advice, uh, presidential Initiative in Banana uh, and Industrial Development, Andrew Matovu, and uh, Professor Doris Kuranga. We also have the team in grains, Makombi Henry, please stand, uh, Wandera Abubakar, uh, Pamela uh, Makumbi, James Mohanga, uh, then we have Joan uh, Mbonye, Joan, please stand. We have also a team that is in Vanilla, uh, Simon Mosisi, please stand. We have the team that is in uh, Fresh uh, Beef, Amos Tiliemo and your team, please stand. Uh, then we also have a young lady who's doing beautiful pieces out of Ugandan leather and fabrics and crafts. Uh, Your Excellency, on the table we have pieces of um, artifacts out of cow horn and uh, Agnes uh, of Seco Designs is the one who put this together. And finally, Your Excellency, I will also introduce uh, our um, coffee company that has broken into this market. In Bureau Coffee, we appreciate what you're doing for Uganda Coffee. Thank you so much. Your Excellency, thank you so much uh, for the great uh, opportunity to speak to this audience. Um, I, I have to officially tell you that uh, Pasei is largely composed of um, an army of volunteers, uh, very enthusiastic to make a change. And our captain, uh, who is uh, Mr. Audrey Rabo, who is on his way, uh, he couldn't be on a quick flight uh, from, from Washington to here. Uh, just tell the team that he will be joining us later. Thank you so much, Your Excellency, and this great audience. Your Excellency, President Yoweri Kabuta Museveni, the President of the Republic of Uganda, the representative from the governor's office, Governor J.B. Prisco. The representative from Mayor Lori Lightfoot's office. All distinguished dignitaries in this occasion. All protocols observed. 
As the President of Ugandans living in North America, we bring you greetings from the Ugandan North American Association. And with me, I have a couple of Ugandan diaspora in the audience. I'm sorry I couldn't carry more than what we would have had in this room, all because of COVID protocols and security protocols. But with me here today, I came with my Vice President, Ms. Joan Bavuga. We have a couple of leaders in the community. Uh, President Abigail Ojela, we have representatives of the Uganda North America uh, leadership, we have Ms. Joyce Bazalachi, we have Mr. Moses Wilson, uh, for those that I may not have mentioned, we have the local Ugandans living in Illinois, keeping Illinois strong, local businesses, thank you for coming here today, can you please wave? so that people know that you're in the audience. We have quite a number of them. They were actually volunteering for this occasion. That is what we do as Ugandans. May I just take a moment to boast that we are descendants of the Pearl of Africa. If you have not been to the Pearl of Africa, which is Uganda, I must say you're missing out. As you see around this room, we have several products. The 26 companies that were introduced by Perseid here are actually introducing 13 products to you that want to come and break into the US market. And we are confident that these products are ready to come on your US shelves. We have tested them and we can say they are good to go. Now, as you all know, we are diaspora, and in the just concluded summit in Washington, we have been at center stage. The USA has reasserted itself in the interests of Africa, and they are looking at us as diaspora being, actually, that segment that they can count on to help drive FDI, that's foreign domestic investments, into Africa. I'm happy to report here that we have a large Ugandan community in Illinois, some of which are business members and who have actually helped Illinois flourish when it comes to doing our part as paying tax citizens. I would like the state of Illinois to know that, that we do our part as Illinois residents and we are proud to be Illinois strong. As business Ugandan diaspora, we are more interested, of course, in the transformational change in our country. We are tired of being in that fora where we hear lectures from North America talking about structural adjustment. We are now looking at transformational and developmental strategies to be in our country. And that's why we are here in this room today. The government of Uganda, if I may suggest, should look at that segment of Ugandan businesses as a very, very vital segment for its country. Because much as we have been based uh, in real estate in things that we just look at as things we are using to survive, I know they call us in Kubachieyo, but we actually drive a lot of FDI into the country. And the government of Uganda can continue engaging like you have done this time make more of these trips to this country so that we can fly the Ugandan flag higher when it comes to businesses. I should conclude and say that we are not just born in Uganda. Uganda is within us. For example, at our concluded UNA our convention, we had a 23-year-old that was born here by a Ugandan father, Mr. Moses Wilson, by an African-American mother, Miss Debbie Wilson, but his heart is in Uganda. We have those children we have given birth to in this country, but they know their roots because they are ready to go back and invest in Uganda. And we strongly advise that you look at this segment because those are the next generation that are going to drive the resources in Uganda and actually make it happen. Ladies and gentlemen, 
as you are here this weekend, we have two days of talking business. I call upon you, I suggest that you attend all the forums that are scheduled after this event when His Excellency goes, the dinner tonight and also the forums tomorrow that will run until the evening. There is a lot that Uganda has to offer. For those of you who are looking for businesses, the gentlemen and ladies that flew from Uganda are ready to do business. We commend the 26 companies that are flying our flag high and introducing Ugandan products into this US market and also Canada. Thank you for coming to be with us today. Thank you for coming to the state of Illinois. Much as it's a cold day, it is a warm day because our president, Yoweri Kabutam Seveni, took two hours out of his busy schedule and stopped by here to come and be with us. We actually, actually are very grateful to you. Thank you for coming. God bless you as you make your way home. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my honor to introduce the Minister of Trade, Honorable Frank Francis Mwenesa. The President of the Republic of Uganda, the Excellency, the Ambassador of Uganda to Washington, D.C., our host, the Governor, and the United States authorities who are here, who are our hosts. Senior Presidential Advisors, the Honorable Oso of Chicago, the organizers of this trade summit, the business fraternity, North American and Ugandan, all the entire Ugandan diaspora in the USA, all invited guests, ladies and gentlemen. Your Excellency, I welcome you to this important international business summit and I thank you, I thank the people of the government of the USA for the warm reception they accorded to us since we arrived in the USA African Leadership Forum in Washington, D.C. The Excellency, despite all your business schedule, you have demonstrated to Uganda that exporting is the way Increasing Uganda's youth jobs, household incomes, and expanding the economy. Your Excellency, you are aware the first African president to endorse a GOA, an initiative that allows African countries bringing to USA their goods under the, the goods under the duty free and quota market access scheme. We need to take this advantage of this market fully. And this is therefore, as a ministry, the efforts of Uganda missions in the USA, our Secretariat, Uganda Promotion Promotion Board, PACDI, and Uganda and Diaspora in Marketing Uganda in USA. My ministry will support all export related marketing and investment promotion efforts here in the USA and other target markets. Your Excellency, the President, I take this singular honor to invite you as our key note speaker to address us. The Ambassador of Uganda, the representative of the Governor, and the representative of the Mayor, and the, and the Chamber of Commerce, uh, and the people who are here who came to attend. 
I think we are talking about a number of things. First of all, we are talking about investment opportunities for the diaspora. If you have worked here and you have some money, we would want you to invest that money in Uganda. Secondly, Americans, America, American citizens who want to make more money. Because money is not enough, it's never enough. If you are making money here, maybe you can make more money in Uganda. And then thirdly, Ugandan products entering uh, this market. Therefore, let's deal with the, those issues, starting with the investment opportunities. The, we are here talking about Uganda. But Uganda is part of Africa. You may know something about Africa, but I think many people don't know enough. Africa is a huge continent It is 12 times bigger than India in, 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 land, in land area. You can fit India into Africa 12 times. You can fit the United States of America four times into, Uganda, into Africa. It's a huge continent. You can put the United States, China, India, you put them in Africa, they will not fill the space of Africa. Moreover, Africa is the origin of man. All these human beings you see here, originally came from Africa. <laughs> Even the whites, the Chinese, all of the Indians, they are all former Africans. <laughs> and they did not come out of Africa long ago. They came out of Africa about 100,000 years ago. And, and yet, the human being has been in Africa for four and a half million years. The, the Homo sapiens sapiens, as we call it. However, the population of Africa has been small. The people who left Africa and came out of Africa multiplied more than we who stayed in Africa. That's why you find that it is only recent that the population of Africa has overtaken the population of India. India, 12 times smaller than Africa, but India has been having a bigger population than Africa all this time, until recently. 
The population of Africa has now grown on account of modern science, which has dealt with the factors that were inhibiting the growth of the population. These were mainly the, the, the fact that Africa is good for human beings, but it is also good for the enemies of man. It's good for both. The mosquitoes, the cephalides. So that's why the population did not grow as much as the out, out of Africa population. Now, with modern medicine, we have been able to modern science, we have been able to control the flies, control the mosquitoes, and that's why the population has now reached 1.4 billion. We are past India and China, and it will be 2.5 billion in the, in, in the next 30 years. Now, these are facts which are not very known in Africa. When people talk Africa, 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 but they are not very really known uh, uh, the potential. That's on, on, on the side of the human resource. But also on the side of politics and management, Things in Africa have, have improved. This huge continent, whose population is, is growing, had a lot of problems in the past. We had bad governance by the chiefs, the kings, and all those illiterate, illiterate people who could not defend us well, who could not organize us well to, to defend foreigners when they came to invade our land. Those idiot, idiot kings were just running around, they, they could not organize us well. Therefore, Africa, from about 500 years ago was ravaged by the slave trade. Many, of the, many people here in, in the US are from that disaster where Africans were taken as slaves because of those idiotic kings who could not organize us. And that went on from 1472, when the first Portuguese arrived in West Africa, for almost 300 years, slaves were being taken out of Africa. And that was destabilizing society. Then colonialism came. But along the way, starting with 1912 in South Africa, where the African National Congress was formed, the African resistance grew, and by 1994, all colonies in Africa had been expelled. So Africa, is now free. But, but apart from explaining the, 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 the colonies, we are also to deal with the consequences of, of, of that colonialism. The consequences were a number of them, but one of them was the, the fragmentation of the African market. Africa is a huge continent, 
population is big, is growing, but that market was fragmented into 54 countries. And Uganda is one of them. In Uganda, Kenya, Tanzania, 54 of them. Some of them small. Therefore, if we are not careful, we could build a Latin America in Africa. That continent is very rich in terms of natural resources. I have visited two times to Brazil and to Argentina, but even without visiting, you can see that those, those, those countries have got a lot, of, a lot of water, fresh water like in the Amazon. They have a lot of forests. They have a lot of minerals. But people are very poor. They have a lot of problems. Why? And yet, neighbor in the USA is very prosperous. So where did the difference come from? How can, how can it be that the United, the United States is prosperous? Latin America is in misery in spite of all those natural resources. It is to do with organization, the way they are organized. The, the 13 American colonies, when they got independence in 1776, they, they united the 13 colonies. And they kept on growing, growing, growing. I think now we have 50, 50 of those uh, countries or states together. Now that created a huge market for business people. If I, if I was here, I would already be a billionaire myself. <laughs> How can I produce and save 300 million people who have money in their pocket and fail to be rich? But if you are in Nicaragua or El Salvador, you produce, you see that it's so easy. Now, Africa was in danger of becoming like Latin America. Rich but disorganized and therefore poor. But fortunately, our, our leaders started seeing this point. And in 1980, they met in Lagos and decided to unify the African market, integrate the African market so that it is easier for business people to sell. And they formed the, what they call the Lagos Plan of Action, and where they formed four regional trading blocks, Comesa, ECOWAS, and so on. Then in, in 1991, we met in Abuja, and we formed what we call now the CFTA. Continental Free Trade Area. So therefore, not only have we got freedom, but we have also got the wisdom to know that a unified market is better for business than a fragmented market. So therefore, when we invite you, when you come here, when I fly for so many hours <laughs> to come here and come here to tell you something that I know is good for you. Yeah. I'm telling you that if you come and you invest in Uganda, you will have the market of the 43 million people of Uganda then you have the market of the 300 million people of East Africa, of the East African community. Then you have the market of the 1.4 billion people.
people of the whole of Africa, which will be 2.5 billion in the next 30 years, to be the biggest, <laughs> to be the biggest population in the world in the next 30 years. At our school was I knew. <laughs> It's not, it's not just the population of Af the market of Africa. We have also negotiated with the Americans, with President Bill Clinton initially for the Agora. So if you invest in Uganda, you can export back to the US. 6,500 products which we should be having the list of those products which will enter the, uh, the US market quota free, tax free. 6,500 products when I last checked. So, that, so there is the market of Africa, there is the market of the US if you are invested in, in, in Africa. But also we have the, the market of the European Union. Again on the same terms. Quota free, tax free, for what they call EBA. Everything but arms can be exported, quota free, tax free, to the European Union. We have negotiated with China, because for us we have got good relations with all, everybody. We will shoot through with China. And China now is allowing almost all our products to enter the Chinese market. Quarter free, quarter free. Without, when you say quarter free, it means no limit. In the past, they used to have quarters. You say, oh, you bring so much, you don't know. It's no more, no, no more limit now. It is anything you produce. If, if, if the market wants it, it will enter the Chinese market water free, tax free. So, therefore, when I'm telling you, please come and invest in Uganda, these are the possibilities. But then the other factors which affect the business the, the, the cost of production. The cost of production are influenced by things like transport. Transport costs can be high. We are dealing with that issue of transport by developing the railway and the water transport for cargo. For the for the roads, roads are good for for for, for, for passengers. But cargo is much cheaper if it, if it is transported by rail or by water. And we are working on that. Then you have got the cost of electricity. We are building many dams on the Nile, developing solar power, developing geothermal. You shall you can get details from people when they come talk to you in more detail. But that's another cost pusher, the, the electricity. Uh, the other one will be the cost of money. For, for industrialization, if, if, you, if you come with your own equity, good. Because if you have your own, your own capital, uh, then you have, you have not borrowed money from banks, it's a lot very expensive. But if you have to borrow from the banks of, of Uganda for manufacturing and for agriculture, we have the Uganda Development Bank where we are putting money for that purpose and which is at, at low interest, much lower interest than uh, the commercial banks. Then the other cost pusher is the cost of, of labor.
Most of them in the United is still low, so not very high. So therefore, you produce cheaply, the market is there, different layers of market, internal, regional, continental, third party markets, you can see that you, 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 you are not at the wrong address in terms of business uh, decision. Now, the, for, for penetrating the, the, the American market, uh, as I told you, we negotiated many, many years ago with the President Bill Clinton for the Agua market. So that market is there and has always been there for almost, almost 25 years or something. Uh, but the problem was a bit on our side. First of all, uh, the production, the quantities, but 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 also now the quality uh, and the knowledge and the knowledge. So that's why I'm glad that you are you are now involved. You the diaspora who are here, you know, you know, you know the market here. And you can see where the opportunities are. When it comes to coffee, like coffee, coffee is our, our coffee is among the best in the world. It's a huge amount of it. You come to products like the bananas, you got it the biggest producer, or one of the biggest producers, producers of bananas in the whole world. We produce 10 million tons of bananas each year, and we are going to go to big number because this 10 million tons is using the old production methods, where you get 5.3 tons per hectare. But Dr. Mwanda, who is there, who is a scientist, in her experimental farm, she is producing 53 tons per hectare. The villagers, 5.3 tons per hectare in her farm, 53 tons. So the production will go up. <laughs> now, those scientists, they are not going to understand that. That is the scientist who identified uh, the banana, banana starch, banana flour, banana starch. Uh, banana, banana starch, starch, banana flour is good, very good for, for the human body. Uh, I hear you, you, you eat, uh, I, I don't eat bread myself. I don't eat bread, no? Sorry. <laughs> uh, I don't eat uh, rice. Uh -huh. I eat African foods. <laughs> that is why I am 78 years old. But if you bring a football match, <laughs> it's not a job. This will be a free advice, consultancy without payment. <laughs> the, like the, the banana flour is very good, much better than all these other flowers, because first of all it has no, what do you call it, gluten? Gluten? Ah. There's something that some of the other flowers, flowers, uh, flowers have called gluten. But that gluten interferes with something, 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 I don't know. <laughs> she can tell you, she, she doesn't know about it. But also, it has got uh, potassium. 
Potassium is very good for the heart muscles. That's why if you go to Uganda, the women don't care very much about weight. You find they are so huge. But, but they don't die from what attack. I, I think that they are assisted by the potassium of the banana. But please watch the way it's not easy. So the, 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 those are very, very good food. Like that one is a, is a very good product. Then you have put all these other products. Like for instance, there is beef, which they are selling here. Uh, the, the Angkore cow, one of the most ancient cattle breeds. It had, I think it is the only cow with the yellow fat. Yellow fat, as opposed to white fat. If you have got a doctor here in the audience, he can tell you what that means. Now, yellow fat means it has got low cholesterol. So that's, that's really, uh, they, they, they did competition in the world. And the America was number one in the whole world in terms of the point of the view. And number six, because of the, of the quality. So, the, the exhibition they are showing here is, 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 is limited. I saw coffee, I saw some other things, but I, leather and so on, but I didn't see milk, milk products. Are, are very good. We have got huge production of milk. You should expose it to the, to, to the American audience. Then you have uh, uh, there are other products which can be developed later. Like for instance, the millet. The, the millet, millet is the richest grain, the greatest uh, that, that is known to man because it has got protein, carbohydrate, and iron ore. So therefore, I, 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 I congratulate you for uh, taking this initiative. And uh, I can assure you that both efforts are, are, will be very rewarding for those who participate. The effort of investing in Uganda, produced for the internal market, the regional market, the, the African market, the international market, and the other effort promoting the, uh, the, the, the penetration, the entry into the American market of a number of uh, Ugandan products. The, the figure you are aiming at the $60 billion, that's a small figure. You should aim at much more than that. For me, I don't aim at that $60 billion. That is not, uh, but let's get it and go beyond it. I thank you. I thank you. Thank you, Mr. President, for uh, this inspiring and uh, informative uh, uh, speech that puts in perception what we are going to be doing for the next two days.